the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly run through uh, tools, equipment and materials. We do have a kit for making the snowdrops, which is available in the Etsy shop. In that kit, you're going to get the white and the green fibres. Now, these are super fine, um, fast felting wool and it, it really does create a very nice finish which is why we've gone for this particular wool for this project you're going to have your wires that's in a 24 and a 22 gauge and there's going to be some floristry tape the template set for the snowdrop is uh, available separately and we've divided it out so that you can you know purchase the bits that you want in order to do it in the way that you want to do it you can buy the template separately you can buy the kit separately um, or you can buy them as a combo together with regards to tools and equipment you're going to need your felting surface a felting needle a multi-tool is optional and i do advise extreme caution using multi-tools with the templates you're going to need an awl um, set of pliers set of wire cutters and depending on how you are going to um, finish off your stem, if you want, there is the florist tape option, or I'm going to be showing you the waxing method. So I'm going to be using these products up here, which is the Flox to Felt Fluff Grip and our very own Felters Wax. So that's all the tools and equipment covered. So we'll get on with our project. We're going to start by creating the centre part of our snowdrop and you're going to need this little template to do it. You may notice that <clears throat> excuse me, your templates are um, slightly thicker than mine. And there's a good reason for that. The 15mm is a lot better to hold and to work with, but this one is 10mm and it's better for filming so you can see more of what's going on inside. So I'm going to be using the 10 mil, and you're going to be using a 15 mil, and I will go try not to stab my fingers. Okay, so you're going to need the white wool to begin with, and this is about 0.3 of a gram, um, which is a ridiculously small number. Some of you may be interested in this little gadget. I use this a lot, particularly when doing the flowers, so I can weigh out pretty exact amounts for each petal. This is a tiny little scales that you can get on eBay. They're only a few pounds, but they are invaluable, in my opinion. You can weigh out very small amounts, and as you can see, that's sort of 0.3 of a gram. Entirely optional. You can eyeball it. That's about as much as we're going to need, and that's going to be divided up into the three petals. So, here's the first sort of bit. The way that I fill any template up that has multiple petals is I do it in sections. There are no hard and fast rules as to how you should do this. You find the way that works for you best. Take your first bit, and then I just bend over the end third there, pop it in the template and just lightly push it into place using your needle and then we're going to gently start felting down into the template and this is very gentle. I'm using a faulty spiral uh, which is a, a very constant go-to for me. And I'm not penetrating my surface. I like to use a, a foam pad, especially when using the templates, because you can feel when your needle hits the density of that foam, and that's when you stop. You're not going to be driving your needle through. We're going to be using the first few barbs on the needle. Then take it out 
I then put that little bit to one side, get my next piece, do the same again, gently push it into the template. If you are, you know, stabbing quite hard like this, what's going to happen is you're going to get some serious attachment to your surface. And every time you turn it over, you're going to be driving fibres out the other side, which is going to drive you crazy uh, because you'll never have, uh, you never obtain a flat surface or a smooth surface. So nice and gently, as soon as we fill the needle, touch the mat, that's when we're stopping. And you're just going to leave a little bit of fluff in the middle because that's obviously how we're going to join all three together. I do it this way because I like to make sure that I get the fibres right up into these little um, pointy bits. My terminology for parts of a flower is shockingly bad. So I apologise up front for all of the bad technical terms for the bits of a flower. Final bit, just fold that last third over. Get it right up into these corners. This is the, the crucial part is making sure that we get some nice definition. And these templates I have designed specifically for needle felting. They have the right amount of indent and the right amount of curve to work with needle felting. There we go. There's our three bits. And as you can see, I'm already starting to get that indentation. Pop it back in. Pop the next one in as well. And then work just over the middle. Pick the whole thing up, turn it around again, and put in our last section. That looks like it's got a bit much, so I'm just going to pull that off. And then these fibres I'm just going to spread out so it all overlaps nicely. Your template will not look this full, obviously because yours is 15 mil. I'm just going to work around very lightly on one side, pick the whole thing up, turn it over and work down the other side. While felting in these templates, you want to keep your needle really quite vertical, any kind of severe angles, and you do run the risk of hitting your template also that extra height that you get in your template means that your needle can stay inside of the template as you're felting. You don't want to be coming up above the top of your template and doing this because, again, you run the risk of hitting your sides. So just gone lightly over the surface. Pick the whole thing up, turn it over and go back in the other side and just, you know, really work those points, those corners. 
I'm going to be brave and come in with a multi-tool just for speed. This one has got, um, what are these? 40 regulars or 40 triangles. As you can see, I'm still keeping it very low. Very gentle. This one only has two needles in as opposed to the normal three uh, that come with these pens. Um, I prefer that because, you know, you can still felt in a straight line. If you've got that one that's offset, um, you know, you really can start hitting things. But my advice is just to stick to a single needle. These don't take long. You can see it's starting to firm up now. And the more you do this, the firmer it will become. You will get a little bit of shrinkage in the template as you as you are felting. You can see this isn't felting to my set my surface at all. And now it is just a case of refine, refine, refine until you're happy with it. You know, you take this to wherever you're happy. If you've purchased the kit and you're using this wool, you will find it is amazing stuff. And it will give you a very nice, smooth surface. So I'm just going to poke that out. You can see, let's get a focus. You can see it's really a nice shape just for a few minutes work. I'm gonna come in and do the sides. And again, I am just using the first barb on my faulty spiral. I actually don't think larger gauge needles will work terribly well with this fibre. You want the more delicate needles. I'm just going to pop my needle in that indent. Define it out a little bit more. Pop it in. Like so. You could even come in with a finer needle. This is a 42 spiral, which is a real polishing needle. And just work all over. And this is going to keep taming it and taming it. Let's get a bit of compression. Really flatten it out. It might warp it a little bit, but that's not a problem. Because we just pop it back in our template. See if I can hold this so you can see. Turn it over. So there's, I'm going to stop there because the refinement process is 
boring to watch, but that in essence is the centre part done. Like I said, you carry on and you refine as much as you want. We're going to add some little accents to this centre part. I'm going to stop, I really am. There. So we're going to grab a tiny little bit of the green and we're going to come back and add the accents on the bottom of the petals. We're going to add these accents and it, it really is such a small amount. Um, a few fibres at most. I don't know if you can see that. It's it's nothing. It's really, if you are a fan of Bob Ross, then a few hairs and some air was one of his signature sayings. And it really is true in this case, it is just a few hairs. Perhaps if I hold it against the white, you can see it a little better. But you're going to take the tip of your needle and what we're going to achieve or what we're aiming to achieve here is kind of a arc an arc of sort of green which makes the center settles just pop out a little bit more um, when you've got the outer petals on so we're going to hold the fibers let's tilt this camera down so we can get a better angle Let's try that. You're going to hold your fibres and just start it. Kind of just bring your fibres into play but don't try to place them. The barbs on your needle will grab them on the way in. And we're just going to go back and forth very, very lightly in that place. And as you can see, it forms just that little touch of green. But I might even be tempted to come in with my very fine 40 spiral. There. The smallest little arc of green. I'm going to leave the petal alone. I am an inherent fiddler. I'm going to do that on all three petals. Just again, a few strands. I'm coming in with my 40 spiral. This is where patience is a real virtue. Just get it started. Coax them. You can make this a bit bigger. I've seen lots of different pictures of snowdrops. There we go, that's the second one. And finally, oh, that's a bit much. Finally, the third. feels like hard work if your needle's not penetrating and just go up a size spirals do tend to get where other needles can't 
There we go. That's our little accents done. And don't be afraid to just come in with a little pair of snips. And just tame those wild bits if you want to. Now I would go all over this again with my polishing needle. But you can spend as much time as you like making these surfaces as smooth as you like. If you've purchased the kit, you, there's enough material in there to make at least three snowdrops and six leaves. Let's just define that a little more. There we go. That's the centre done. As much as we need it to be done right now. So this is going to form the outside of the petals. And this is the inside to form the centre. We're going to have it do that. Okay, centre done. We're going to make the outer petals next. You're going to need this template to form your outer petals. And you can see it's a thin and pointy up here and rounded down the bottom. So this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. So if you imagine, let's move my camera a second. We've got our centre petals and these are going to hang around like that. I've weighed out, I think it's like 1.8.2 of a gram of this wool. And I've pulled it off so it's just ever so slightly bigger than my template. Um, I'm going to stuff it like this in the middle so we have these sort of tufts stuck out either end. This is the curved end. So this we're going to fall we're going to fold back in. I like to fold where the ends of the petals um, form because then you haven't got any fibres kind of you know sticking out that way. They're looped back in. It helps, I feel, to create a slightly better end. I'm just going to work, same as the centre petals that we've just done, work very lightly bringing all of the fibre into the template. Now when we get up to the pointy end, I'm going to bring the fibres in, but that's it. We're going to leave that quite fluffy and only really start to felt sort of from here down because we're going to be using this top bit to attach and if you make it too solid it's going to make life more difficult for you when we try to attach it to the center so just leave the very the very very top bit just a little bit fluffy Pick it up, turn it over, and again work the other side exactly the same. I'm bringing in my multi tool again. And your 
template will not look as full as mine. Do keep that in mind. Turn it over again. Once it starts firming up, you know, it will start sort of bouncing around a little bit. Take it out, turn it over. And it is now just that refinement again, over and over until you're happy with it. Just leaving that tiny little tuft up the top. You can really see this firming up now beautiful fibre. See our petal really starting to take shape. Gonna come in at the sides. Look over the surface. And if you Google pictures of snowdrops, you'll see that they have like this petal and then this sort of long bit which goes up into the cap. So that's what we're trying to recreate. Hold it down. And I found that through no particular intention, a happy accident, is that your petals will start to naturally get a curl to them more one way than another. So decide this is going to be the outside of the petal, this is going to be the inside. So I'm, it's, you see it's curving and forming a sort of a really nice petal shape. There we go going to come in with my light petal and what we're doing is firming up the surface we're not trying to change the shape um, the wool any fiber will go the way that you point your needle so if we were to do that can you see how it's changing the shape and that's not what we want we just want to firm up the surface so we're just using the first barb and we're not driving that needle there. And if you feel like you've gone a bit off track just stuff it back in your template. You've always got your template to fall back on. Let's get it back in there. There we go. Much better. So carry on and refine, smooth out, polish as much as you're happy with. And you're going to need to create three of these outer petals. I'm not going to sit here and do all three on camera for you because that would just be 
me repeating myself. And you have a, <laughs> there's a rewind button for that. So I won't waffle on indefinitely. I will leave it there. That's one outer petal. So we want three in total. I'm going to make those and then we're going to come back and start assembling the centre. As you can see, I've got my three petals made and I've got my centre. What we're going to do is attach these petals to the centre. The way that I go about doing this, and again, you can find your own way, but these green bits need to be facing out. So this will be the inside of the petal. I'm going to fold it over like that. You can see the three petals. Then hold the petal end and just go round that sort of top little dome. And for this part, I am driving my needle pretty much through the whole thing. Like this. So it's it's just holding it in place rather than me fighting with it as well as the petals. It doesn't have to be too fixed at the moment because we're going to be opening it all back out to put the wires in. But this will help placement of these. Now, these, the gap in between the two petals is the middle of this petal. I think that made sense. What we're going to do is lay it down. So there's my gap. There's the middle. Adjust it. And that's over the top. And a few tacking stabs into place. We don't want anything too final at the moment. We move it round. There's my gap. There's my petal. Put that there. And now, as you can see, the gap between the two big petals reveals the little green flash of the inner centre bit. So there's my last one. Petal down. And you can probably hear, you know, I mean, I am, I am driving this in. I'm using a good centimetre and a half of my needle here. Leave some room for adjustment. But there, you can see, there's your snowdrop. So I'm going to open this out a little bit. Pop it down flat. And just go all over this top bit. Really securing those petals in. And do keep that, you know, to the centre. You don't want to be attaching it too much outside of that kind of centre dome. Just go around the middle bit. And I am driving my needle through. Not completely up to, you know, the handle, but real good firm centre. Nice and solid. So when we fold it back over... I'm just going to go around that bit again, just over the top of the dome, just to bring it back. There we go. 
Yeah, you play with it as you see fit. But there we've got our snowdrop. Now what we're going to do is wire up the centre of this. And for that you're going to need, you've got two wire. if you've bought the kit you've got two different gauge wires in there. I think it's a 22 and a 24. And you're going to want the 22, which is the thicker of the two wires. Uh, there's my wires. There we go. You might be able to see it. See, one is thicker. Wire gauges like needles, the higher the number, the thinner the needle or the thinner the wire. Um, this is a 22 gauge, but this is SWG, uh, which is standard wire gauge, um, which is different to AWG, which is American wire gauge. So I don't know what the equivalent is in American, but I'm using a 22 gauge SWG, 22 gauge forest wire. And this one is 12 inches long. This is the one that you get in the pack. Bring in your awl or anything that you can use to poke a hole. We're going to go and poke. We want two holes quite close together. Given that we've felted this really quite firmly in the middle, we should get some nice crisp holes. So we're going to have one, sort of one there and one there and I'm just going to drive that down into my foam push it through there you can see that's a good hole and then another literally probably about three just three or four mil over and obviously as you poke the other one the first one will move slightly so I'm just gonna just go back and forth a second just make sure that both of those holes are there you can see we're gonna take our wire and I have learned that it's best to preemptively cut a little um, angle at the end. So I'm going to do that. Hold your wire, hold your pliers, and just cut an angle. So you've got a little sharp point. It goes wrong way. You're going to be feeding it in from the back. So, let's find that hole again. Having that little sharp point on it does just help guide it in. So we're going to come through, then bend over probably about, oh, let's see, probably about three or four centimetres from the end. And we're just going to bend it back right on itself as close as we can. And then this goes back through. The other hole and back out like that. Grab your flower and bring them across quite tight at the back and then twist. The 22 gauge is, is quite sturdy um, but if you find that it's difficult twisting it just use your pliers 
So there we go, that's wired up. That's a little difficult to wrap around with my fingers. So I'm going to snip it off. Just come in with my pliers. Just squish it down. You don't want any real sharp ends sticking out anywhere. There we go. Just run my finger. Oops. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is build up the... I don't know what this bit of the flower is called, but the, the green bit on the back there. So we're going to grab our green wool and I'll show you how to do that bit. To build up this first part of the back, you need to grab some of your green. We just want a, a little bit. And then grab your needle. And all we're going to do is we're, we're just going to draw around, just attaching some fibres at the top. in a circle all the way around just to get us started and you do want to keep it quite small we don't want to come right down here nice and slowly with the needle just all the way around until you meet up And then just twist it lightly. You don't want to twi over twist it and pull the whole thing off. But we're just going to start just by twisting it and seeing where we're at. So we've got, see how it's starting to sort of slope backwards. Let's get our needle. We're going to go in at this angle. Obviously be a little more careful now because you've got your wire in the centre. And just felt down these fibres ever so slightly. I'm going to come in with a little bit more green. And just wrap it over itself. And then come off down the wire. That didn't go too well, so don't be afraid, just pull it off. We want what we're aiming for. Let me take that off a second. What we're aiming for is a sort of a build up here and then it sort of thins out. So I'm just going to wrap a bit more in place. Get our needle, poke it down this way. The fibres will always go the way you point your needle. So we want them to go this way. And just work your way around ever so slowly. Attaching the outside of the fibres. I'm going to wrap that back down a little bit. That's much better. You see we've got this sort of... I'm still none the wiser as to what this part of the flower is called. This slopey back bit. I know on a rose the back shape is called a calyx. I don't know if it's the same for a snowdrop. 
but this bit just taking our time and just shaping it again we're back to using the very tip of our needle nice loose grip so if we hit that wire we're not going to do any damage or break our needle so you can hear I'm hitting the wire that's just about where we want it it's always a good idea to have some reference pictures around as well so there we've got our back slopey bit in the green like so just requires a little bit more fiddling and then I'm just going to go back in around that edge so I've got a nice crisp line Let's see if I can get real this is going to be the oddest angle but what I'm doing is I'm just just catching the edge of the green and turning it that and there is your snowdrop <laughs> I've actually just figured something out it which has been bugging me almost since I started the tutorial I thought maybe it was my eyes I don't know if it's come out on camera at all but some of these petals um have just the slightest touch of blue and I figured maybe it was the the foam on a green surface or something like that but I've just realized that it's because I've got a nice new foam pad and when you're doing especially white you probably want something that is you know nice and clean um, but I put this filming dot in the middle of blue sharpie <laughs> And as I've been rolling my project over it, because that's my aiming spot, um, I realised that perhaps some of it has come off on a couple of the petals. It's not so pronounced on the outside, but there is a bit on the inside. And uh, so, yeah, it has just dawned on me what's caused that. So there we go. Right, on with this. The back slopey bit is now done. So what we're going to do now is cover this wire and you've got a few options for this um, if you've got the kit there's some floristry tape in there and let me grab a bit uh, floristry tape I'm not going to do floristry tape on this I'm going to show you the wool and wax um, but for those of you who aren't familiar with florist tape if you've bought the kit there's some in there um, but you can get this at a lot of different places. It comes in a lot of different colours. You can get black, brown, white, a few shades of green. And it's very easy to tear. You activate the tape. It's, it, it's not sticky, um, but it does stick to itself. And you activate it by holding and pulling. Do you hear that kind of sound? And at that point, it's good to go. And I'm just going to pop that back out. The way that you would do this for this particular flower, or for any actually, is you hold the tape. You kind of wrap it round whilst you hold it and anchor it on itself a little bit. And then you can you sort of put it on a, a there's the wire and there's the angle of the the tape coming off so it's on an angle working down and then you just roll 
all the way down your wire and it's a very neat and quick way to cover a wire um, particularly um, on stems the flourishy tape can also be used on claws um, for birds and there's a free tutorial over on my youtube channel on making little bird feet one of the methods that i show you is covering it with um, brown florist tape so that's how you would do it if you're going to go the route of using the florist tape you would just tidy up your fluff up here and then wrap your wire in florist tape but we're going to use the slightly more complicated or long-winded method of covering this with wool and waxing it so i'm going to go and melt my wax and then we're going to come back and i'm going to show you how to do that we're going to do the leaf in this part and you'll need this template to do it i've got about uh it's probably about 0 0.2 of a gram let's have a look yeah 0 0.2 um gives a, a nice sort of density to the leaf you can obviously do it um a little thicker if you want or thinner the green wall it's got this lovely variegated effect in it which i really like stuff it into your template again with the fluffy bits at either end and then we're going just to pull that back and then bring it up into the corner much like the other templates that we've used you just fill it work over it and again, remember your template is going to be taller than mine, so it won't look as full. But just spend some time just getting that corner nice and defined. Work your way down to the other end. And then, much like the top, just fold it back on itself. And work it up into the corner. You want to make sure that your corners are, or your ends rather, are quite defined. Pull it up. Turn it over, let's pop it back in. That folding over at the end will mean you'll, you'll have a slightly chunkier end. But then I find felting the very tip just that little bit firmer than everything else really defines it. And one of these ends will be visually better than the other. So that's the one that you'll use for the top of the leaf. So just working over the other side this is a long template so you'll have enough um, if you've bought the kit you'll have enough in there to do at least six leaves just going to turn it over stuff it in the ends work those points with my single needle and then I'm going to come in with my multi-tool just to firm this up a bit quicker still with that nice light motion nothing too too hard and too penetrative into the surface just keep it nice and light on the top just 
so all over turn it over and again refinement down as far as you want to you're happy with it this is still quite fluffy in the middle it needs firming up a lot more You can see there's all the fluff on the back. But you just keep turning it. I'm gonna go back in with my multi tool. You will have, you know, probably your own needles that you prefer to work with. Um, this particular type of fibre felt so wonderfully you may find the thicker needles are um, too aggressive so this is halting down I'm going to give this some compression Then go over it with my single. I mean, this is really quite thin, you can see here. Something a little chunkier would possibly be slightly easier, but I like a challenge. Part of the reason you can get this so flat and so thin is down to the wool or the fibres. This is super fine. There we go. Can see that really starting to take shape now. Put it back. And you just keep working it and working it. See, the more you work it, the more it will firm up. I think I am just about done. I'm going to go in and need the, the very, very thin one. The 42 spiral just to come in, tidy those sides. And just to polish all over the surface. This is possibly a little too thin, so you might want to, you know, if you're, if you're weighing it out, you might want to go to, I don't know, 2.5. Sorry, 0.25 of a gram. I think this was 0 0.20, so a quarter rather than a fifth. Okay, so we've got a nice leaf shape. I would probably spend a little more time just firming it up, getting it really nice and stiff. But for the purposes of this video, I shall move along. Okay. In your kit, 
there will be the thinner wires which are the 24 gauge green wires and this is where you you're going to need to decide you know obviously when you start this project what your end result is going to be um, whether it's going to be a leaf and a small um, sort of drop and you're going to turn it into a brooch whether you're going to have some little critter or creature holding it um, if it's going in a display I will adjust this camera um, for a second and this is the display that I made and these leaves are literally just wired bent over at the back and then are placed in pre-drilled holes that I made in this little log um, yeah. depending on what you're going to be doing will depend on how you how you want to arrange and, and wire these up I like to put a wire in my leaves because then you can get the appearance of movement in the leaf it's not just a flat shape so the way that I do that these 24 gauge for the leaves I just bend in half and snip you don't need a whole wire then put that point so there's your wire there's your angle So you get that the point it does make it a lot easier decide which end is going to be your top I'm going to choose this end and go in at the top and you're going to have to feel it but push your wire down through the middle this again is possibly when a slightly thicker leaf would um, disguise the wire a lot easier and then just push it all the way down to the bottom like so so this is the top and this is the bottom I use a touch of this glue and I think I may have omitted this at the beginning when I ran through tools and equipment you don't have to glue it you could loop this over and sort of work it back down um, to hold it in place you know, there, there are numerous um, options. But I find a touch of this glue is more than sufficient. I do prefer to use the gel super glue rather than the um, liquid. My trusty piece of greaseproof paper. And what we're going to do with this is I am just, I'm going to touch a drop of this glue just on the end, sort of five mil, this wire. And then I'm just going to quickly put it right down in and just let it settle for a second in there. you will 
leave that to dry um, more than I'm about to but scooch up the other end which is the bottom and just a very small bead of glue focus there we go very small bead of glue just on there and scooch that back down and that is more than enough um, to, to hold that I mean it's already grabbed the nice thing about the gel is that you do get just a few extra seconds working time so there we go now I would leave that um, you know I would leave that for five ten minutes go make a cup of tea and then you'll be ready to sort of assemble this with your flour. And so while my wax is melting, I'm just going to prepare my wire. And because we're going to wrap the wire, um, long fibres are generally better for wrapping than short fibres. But there is a little trick. If you lay out your short fibres and just go down them, pick them up. We're not trying to felt, we're just joining. Just going to join them so that we've got a slightly longer piece to work with. You can just, you know, wind a short bit, then get another short bit and wind another short bit. It's completely personal preference. But I'm just going to show you this quick little way of making a slightly longer piece out of shorter fibres. Like I said, we're not felting, we're just joining them together enough so that they don't completely fall apart as we're putting a bit of tension on them there so taking our wire let's move that out of the way we've got our longer piece and I'm going to use this absolutely amazing stuff which is called fluff grip and it's available from flock to felts and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It grips fluff. I'm going to get this out of the way. And what I'm going to do is put a very, very thin coating of this on my wire. And what that will do, we are going to be waxing it. So this only has to be done roughly. But this will enable this fiber to grip to this smooth surface because the stems on these are so thin and so delicate we can't wrap a pipe cleaner um, it will just bulk it out too much so I'm going to get this fluffy bit up out of the way and I just press the wire and pull and that is more than enough. A baby wipe will um, remove the tacky from your fingers, which naturally I don't have to hand. So I'm just going to pop the lid back on that. And then I probably should have shortened the wire, but I'm just going to wrap this fluff. Hang on. And all I'm doing is holding this in between my fingers 
and turning and that motion and the stickiness of the wire brings it all down into a very nice thin so I'm going to go in with my larger piece just anchor itself and squeeze and roll it much like we did with the florist tape but just down and that's all that I need right now because I'm going to be waxing over the top of this I don't need anything more than this just to lightly hold this in place so there is my wire all wrapped with fluff I would use this particularly um, if I was wiring ears on a creature you have your wire and your ear and when I'm covering it I like to wrap the wire in the colour that the ear is going to be so that if there is any separation in the fibres you're not going to see a bare wire so this stuff is invaluable for just running a very very thin amount of um, fluff on a wire so my wax is melted my wire is prepped so now we're going to wax it this is the felters wax that we sell in the Etsy shop and this is the natural colour we do it in three colours black pink and natural and there are a few tutorials on my youtube channel of how to use this stuff for a, a whole range of things ears noses claws feet beaks um it's it's quite versatile and now for waxing stems what we're going to do is apply the wax just to this part now i only want um this to be about this long but what i'm going to do is wax down a bit further and then snip it off the felters wax is a hot preparation wax so you will need a, a wax melter if you're going to go the route of this and it is probably worth mentioning that there is a wax sample pack um, also available it's a collaboration between mum's makery flop to felts and the makers um, and there's a little sample of all of the different waxes for you to try out and test so but we are going to apply this to this you can use something like a little spatula or um, maybe uh, a coffee stirrer stick or a lollipop stick or something you know something just to scoop it from there and put it onto there I on the other hand am going to do what I always do um, and it's probably worth advising um, don't try this at home obviously it's up to you but um, this is how I do it I don't recommend you do it I recommend you use a thing but I just dip my finger and um, <laughs> apply it to the wire and I'm not starting right at the top I am just doing this first bit like so and as you can see there it really um, seals the wire what I'm going to do is I'm going to wax just a little bit up this way but I'm not focus there we go I'm going to do a little bit up this way but I'm not going right to the top you could especially if you had an applicator um, but I don't I tend to find that just going up a little bit and then it you know branches out into the fluff so I'm just going to grab this
and wrap it around and the heat from my fingers there will work it in nicely to the to the wire so I'm going to do that all the way down just dip pinch and roll and you can see it really makes a nice thin delicate wire you do actually end up more, with more on your finger but it's worth saying that if you do end up with any kind of clumps or white bits sort of like say you've got something like that use your fingers roll it back and forth and the warmth of your hand will distribute it the other thing you can do is apply some gentle heat um, and that will sort of remelt the wax in situ and it will spread it out but I find that this is more than adequate so some more it's also um, worth noting that you wax the same way that you have wrapped if you've wrapped this way and then you wax that way um, it can cause a bit of a mess so almost there dip pinch and roll there and that's it that's the wire done there we go very nicely waxed wire so I'm going to clear this up um, you can depending on what you're going to do um, with the leaf um, you know you can bring this in wrap it round and then wax everything together um, you can wrap it wax it separately if you're having it as a display piece like I've done then it doesn't need anything you just leave it as is bend the wires over and stick it in something the floristry oasis um, that you can buy for dried flowers um, works very well for you know making nice arrangements so lots of options there for you depending on what you visualize as your end result so I'm going to clear up and then we're going to put the finishing touches to our snowdrop. We are pretty much done now with the snowdrop. Everything is in place. We just have to create that really nice curved uh, drop of the snowdrop. I find that my thumb actually does it quite nicely. I'm just going to loop that and bend it and that's it I can bring in my leaf yeah and that is the snowdrop and the leaf finished you cut this wire off however high you want it for whatever purpose you're using it for and it's such a beautiful little flower um, you know I made the display um, and Mother's Day is coming um, so I think that's what I had in my mind was to do you know a little arrangement for my mom they're great to give us little gifts little brooches little accents things for little creatures to hold. Um, th there's a lot of things that you can do with such a, a simple, pretty little flower. That's it then. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have found this tutorial to be useful and I wish you all a very crafty day.